Hey guys, this is Michael at NWA3D, and today we're going to start our kind of introduction to Autodesk Inventor. And so what that means is that we're going to cover a couple different things. So first off, we're going to cover a design process and how we would work through that in order to help either solve our problems or find a solution to something. Um, we're also going to visualize three-dimensional objects or concepts as two-dimensional we're going to look at the basic user interface of Autodesk Inventor. We're going to create a couple of sketches, and we're also going to use tools to manipulate those sketches or objects in order to make the 3D models we want. So first off, let's talk a little bit about the design process. So here for day one, we're going to go over the design process and visualizing a 3D object as two-dimensional. So first off, we have here, we're going to just label it the design process. And the design process is used in a way that we like to reiterate it all the time. Or, in other words, we like to repeat it. And the reason for this is that each of the steps go over a different thing that we could find an issue with our previous design, or we could find a new solution that we need to make. So first off, basically we just want to use this design process as a way to solve problems. And so we are going to learn from our failures by following this process. As we have a failure or something pops up that doesn't seem quite right, or maybe our design doesn't end up right for the first time through, we're going to have to redo or repeat that and learn from what we did wrong the first time. So the two key themes of the design process are teamwork and design. So by following each of the steps of the design process, we can strengthen our own personal understanding of what open-ended design means, and we can better develop our creativity and practical thinking. So let's take, take ourselves through the design process real quick. And so first off, we're going to need to ask ourselves, you know, the question of what do I need or what is my problem? So one is going to be identify need or problem. And in order to do this, we're going to have to come up with something that we may or may not need. Now, for this case, I have came up with an idea of a design that I wanted to create, and it was due to a problem that I had. So I was looking for something to carry around my tools earlier to visit a classroom and help teach about the 3D printers. And I found that I didn't have a nice hard carrying case or anything of the sort. So, of course, I resorted to a box in a small instance, but I would rather create a solution or design in order to fill that problem. So, for this idea, I'm going to go ahead and put down that I need a toolbox or toolkit to carry around my tools. So, I don't have a whole bunch of tools, so it doesn't have to be a huge toolkit, so I need to keep that in mind. So next, two, would be to research the criteria and constraints. So many times when we're going through the design process or trying to create something, we have to consider what is and what isn't and what we can do about that. So we need to figure out if we want to use a certain way or if we need to adhere to a certain width or height. And so what should we keep in mind whenever we go throughout the day. So for my toolkit, I don't need it to be large, so I would like it to be a smaller size. So I consider it to be small, but let's say it's, uh, we can put it at maybe 12 inches by, let's say, how tall do we want it to be? So 12 inches by how tall? So let's say eight inches. And then we don't need it super wide, so let's say four inches should be good. Right? Okay, and now we have my idea of what criteria or constraints I'm going to use in order to build my object. And so you can continue to go through that. So we could also say that I need latches on the side in order to create this object. I need hinges in order for it to open and close. I want might want some areas inside of it that clip onto tools, clip tools and so on. And I could continue through this list until I figured out what I would really like for my design to end up being. And so let's move on to step three. 
So now I need to generate solutions. So I need to come up with what ideas that I could have. So this would be a time where you would really want to sketch maybe your solutions or what you thought might work. So you can also brainstorm with other people. And of course, in this general area, we're using teamwork most of the time. Remember that. So in that form of teamwork, many people will come up with many ideas and then we could sort through them and see what is good and what is bad and what we may wanna take from each. So for this case, since I am kind of working alone, then I'm going to continue with my toolkit and I'll see if it comes out like I wanted it to be or if I need to learn from my failures. So once we have that solution or we select that solution, so I selected the toolkit solution, so I'm going to use this same design idea so I'm going to just say toolkit. And I have a little idea of how I'm going to make it within my head. So next, we're going to move on to something that's developed the solution. So we need to you know, create that design, or we need to finally pick the design and start really thinking about what it's going to end up being. So this is where we expand upon that original idea. And so, you know, I could give you a better sketch of it, maybe something like this. You can say I want it arched on the top, but I also want a carrying handle. So somewhere in here, there needs to be a hole so I can carry it. And maybe a little bit further down, and then through here. And I'm gonna have to have my hinges around here. So I might wanna take those out so that I know that I do need those. So these are the hinges. And of course I could put a label on it because I'm 3D gonna, going to 3D print this. And so this is an original design that I'm kind of coming up with. So I want to develop the solution more and more and see if there's better ways to shape this object in order for it to clip together better or otherwise. So although I do have these hinges, how am I gonna keep it together? So I do need to remember that I need some latches. So I could put some latches here or I can choose to put a latch directly here in the middle. It's kind of up to me, and I guess I'll develop that solution as I create the design more and more. So next would be to move through to step five, and that would be to construct a prototype. And by constructing a prototype, we can see how that design actually works out. We can also test it for any errors or problems that we may be having. So at this point, what we would do is, well, should we have the prototype? So I'm going, I would 3D model it first. And then I would 3D print it. And through that step, I get my solution, right? And say I have two halves of the piece, so I'm gonna probably print it in two halves. So I'll have one half here, and then there'll be a hinge here, and then I'll have another half and a small part of the hinge. Now we can join these two once they're both printed off. So say this is both of them, like so. And now I'm kind of thinking there's gonna be the handle right there is the idea. And then these will attach by the hinges and they'll pull together. And so that's what would be my constructed prototype. So at that point in time, what I can do is I can test the design. So that is what I would do. So in order to test this design, I would probably open and close the latches many times. I would make sure that the hinges are working correctly. And I would make sure that all of my tools fit inside it nicely like I wanted them to. And in a general sense, that would complete my design. My solution would be completed. And I would have a working part to hold my tools from now. So at this point, does it work like I desired it to? Do I, do I want to make any different changes? Do I need to adjust the design in some way? Or how should I make it better or worse? So those are ideas that in questions that you'll ask as you go through this. And so we wanna make sure, does it work like design? And if not, then of course we can ask our question of how should I make it better? So first we can always say number seven here, and we want to present those results. So we wanna give the people you know, all of the results that we have and spread that throughout our teams. So once our team knows what the results were, the team can start working on ideas that they may want to reiterate 
that they may want to redo in order to make the design better. And that would be a lot of brainstorming again, and every part of these of this process kind of latches into each other. And it all kind of comes back around as you go through each of these steps. And so once we have to present the results in your teamwork, kind of, you know, you mull it over, you see what is good and what is bad. And then on number eight, you could decide, do I want to redesign? And if you do, then you're going to go through this process very similarly again, but you already have your neater problem. Or you created a new neater problem by saying, well, the hinges were bad, so you need to find a solution to how the hinges work, and then you would research criteria and constraints, or research basically what is good types of latches, or excuse me, hinges for 3D modeling and 3D printing. We could generate those solutions and print a couple off, and then test that solution and see if it actually worked. And so as you go through this process, we're going to keep going back and forth until we find and we have the design that we designed great right? and that's when we'll present our final results and we'll actually give all of that information back out and show the analysis and everything that we worked through in order to create that object so that was a little bit about the design process and how you can use it in order to shape your thinking and also shape open-ended design so now let's let's think of some 3d objects so if i'm going to create a sketch here And this sketch is going to be a little rough, so bear with me. But we're going to start visualizing these three-dimensional objects. The idea is that they're three-dimensional. as two-dimensional. So I'm going to draw a triangular prism. And this prism that I'm drawing, oops, not too much. And then pop it through there is a three-dimensional object in space, right? And so we have to remember that whenever this is three-dimensional, what is it going to look like from each side? So if we look at it from the front, right, this triangle here is going to be the front of our object, and we could sketch what the front looks like. So in order to sketch the front, all we would have to do is kind of look at this from head on, and in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to be simply a triangle. And at this point, now I can label this simply front. And this is the front view of it. So let's go ahead and decide on the side view of it. So if I do look at this directly from the side and I twist it, and look this direction, what am I going to see? Most likely what I'm going to see is just a flat plane if we're looking at it from a single side. You have to think of, well, if this was flat, what would it be like? And if we were to look at that from the side, it would actually be a rectangle. That would be exactly what we see from the side view of it. Now it may look a little bit more shaded here at the top or here at the bottom, depending upon how the light is hitting it because it is sloped, but we will see a rectangle. So we'll say this is our right hand view. Next, let's think a little bit about what we would see from the top. So if we kind of tilted it to the top and we were looking straight down at this object, we again would see another rectangle, but we would see a rectangle with a line through. So if we consider the top here, then if I took it, and it would be just like so. It would be flat here and flat here, but then there would also be a line going right through the middle which is this top scene. And so this is the top view. Okay. And so this, these three views expresses our entire three dimensional shape, right? So we have the top view, the bottom view is also going to be this just without the line. And that should be pretty obvious just from this bottom view. So if we were to fill this in, you can also see that that area underneath it is going to be simply a rectangle. Then the front is going to be a triangle. The right would also be a rectangle with a maybe shaded area because it is sloped. And then we're also going to have our top. And so this is imagining a three-dimensional object as two-dimensional. 
And that's what you have to do in order to move into the building of Inventor. So Inventor is a traditional CAD program. What I mean by that is the traditional idea of CAD is that you create a two-dimensional sketch. So we're going to create maybe one of these or this or this. And then we're going to use tools and functions in order to change that out. So just for a little background, CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. So we're going to need to sketch one of these views inside of the CAD program or Inventor 2015. What we're going to do is how would we best express or how would we best make this object? So one of the functions that we have within Inventor is called extrude. What extrude does is it actually pulls a shape out of it. So if I were to have, say, this rectangle here, and I were to extrude this rectangle, what happens is it comes out of the paper. And it would actually be a three-dimensional object at that point or a rectangular prism. And that's what extrude does. So it actually pushes it out of that view. So we need to visualize a lot of our models as two-dimensional. So if I grab this model, for instance, that I had created earlier, and this is actually a shampoo bottle lid that I tried to redesign. So this was to test my own personal skills, but I had to look at it and see what would be the easiest way to start this design. And how would I make it? So would it be, you know, from the bottom? Would that be the easiest way? Maybe from the top? Or from one of the side views? And so what I decided on was that I wanted to sketch it from the bottom first. And so I created this ellipsis that looked nice and smooth, and then I extruded this ellipsis. And so what it did is it pulled that entire object, it pulled it up just like so, and then I created curves here and cut them through. And that's kind of how I went about designing this different product. And so we have to take these products and we have to have the idea, what would it be better as in order to sketch it? And so for this one, I had the case that I did want to draw it from the bottom was the easiest view. And so if I did an ellipsis like this, and then I extruded it out of the paper, then I would have a certain height. And then once I had that certain height, which would be very much like this, what I could do was I could actually take that and I could cut the sides off, right? So I took another sketch, so this side was flat at this point, I took another sketch and I drew lines from here to here. And then I used extrude again, but I used it in a different way in order to take away some of the model. So maybe a little bit of a bigger line here, like so. And then I used the extrude function to take away this area here, leaving me something more like so. And so what I ended up having was something that was flat-sided. So it was very much like, oops, a little high there. And then maybe I can have a larger mirror. And this was three-dimensional, so this actually went back over here, something like so, and then it also continued the arch on this side, and that would go into this one, so you can't quite see it because of the view idea that we're looking at. So pardon my rough sketches here, but this is what happens in Inventor, and this is what I mean by traditional CAD program. So we're going to create 2D sketches in order to model all of our objects. And so that's about all that we have time for today. And so if you kind of followed along with this, what I want you to do at this point is I want you to either decide on a triangular prism like so, or a hexagonal. And so a hexagonal is going to have six sides. Now I want you to try and sketch that out and then draw the front, right, and top view so that we have an idea of how to express that model later on. So if you could work on that, then that would be wonderful, and you can always come back with me next time on day two of Introduction to Inventor.